Hey everyone, it's Irish and welcome back to my channel. I know it's been a long, long time since I last uploaded a video and this is super long overdue since I think the last video that I posted was a year ago. I know I've been um, kind of busy, but anyway, I'm still making this video just um, so some of y'all might find it helpful and might need some more idea regarding how to process your U.S. immigration status. So anyway, this video is an update about my I-751 application or the removal of condition of your green card. So if y'all been watching uh, my previous videos, y'all know that I got here in the United States uh, through a K-1 visa. And after a K-1 visa, you will be given a green card that is um, good for or valid for two years. And um, the two years was up last September 2021. So I had to renew my green card. Um, you are allowed to renew it 90 days prior to the expiration date and i renewed or i submitted my application last july yeah july of 2021 so effectively i received the 18 month extension letter um, for my green card so it gave me one and a half more years extension and then after that i actually received another letter from them saying that it will be 24 month extension so effectively i have two more years um for my green card before it expires and a lot of things have happened after that actually so anyway um after i received a 24 month extension um i think sorry before that before i received the extension letter i actually got a letter from them saying that they're just going to reuse the biometrics that i have on file um i think that's that's the one that they used for my green card initially my my very first application so they just reused it and so I didn't have to go back to their office to get my picture taken and my fingerprinting and all that um, stuff. But I didn't um, get any refund. So they will not refund the $85, I believe, for the biometrics fee. So you still have to pay it even though they are going to reuse what you already have on file. So with that being said, uh, I got effectively approved um or i was just assuming that i got approved since i have the 24 month extension letter and um i didn't hear from usas after that um i had to use my green card um with the extension letter for two um different scenarios so first time was when I was applying for my current job because um, my green card that time was about to expire um, upon hiring so I had to present the extension letter and then the second time I had to use it was when we were in the Philippines just pa uh, last year in November um, or I should say I think December in December um, since I had to present a visa coming back to the United States. So I used my green card, but the card itself was expired. And so I had to present the extension letter. So if you're carrying an expired green card, you have to always carry your extension letter just in case they will, uh, you will have to present it to someone, you know. So there's that. And then um, after a year of that or using the extension letter, um, I was eligible or I got my eligibility to apply for the U.S. citizenship or the naturalization. So the N-400. Um, it was very easy. Actually, it's the same, um, same time that I was able to 
or a year after I applied for the removal of condition. Since um, I came here through a K-1 visa, so that means after three years, not five years, three years, I was eligible to apply for naturalization. Um, and so I sent my application online and it was pretty easy. Um, we just have to go to um, the website and find the form and uh, you also have to submit all the requirements online as well so what i did is i filled out the form um and scanned all the documents that i i needed um and um, sent it to the uscis including the payment i believe so there's the form that you need to fill out for that um i might i might make another video of that but i cannot promise but i will for sure make a video regarding my interview so um stay tuned for that anyway so uh i got the letter or i i sent the application form to the uscis and then in november of 2022 we went back to the philippines later on during the vacation we got um, an email saying that i got my interview date so i actually missed my first interview schedule and if you are um, going through the same thing don't worry about it um, as long as you have a like a valid reason then you should be fine um, of course we booked the ticket or the flight and the vacation and all that um, without knowing when they're gonna give me my interview date and you still have to do your other stuff um, while waiting so we kind of expected that it might be during that time, but we weren't sure. So, and of course, we didn't want to waste the vacation. But anyway, so we were in the Philippines when I got the letter that I have the interview date. That was December. So I almost made it to my schedule. However, it was scheduled in the morning around 8 and our arrival time was 5 p.m. So there's no way we're gonna make it um, if we're not gonna like you know if that we're not gonna get another ticket or something like that. So we just called the USCIS and say hey we are in the Philippines and uh, I won't be able to make it on my schedule. So they said okay we'll just reschedule you. Um, but they rescheduled me um, a month after so when we arrived in the United States I had to call them once and they said that um, you are or we are aware that you weren't able to um, attend your schedule date for your interview and that we are rescheduling it so you just have to um, effectively wait original date was december 16 or 14 i should say and then the rescheduled date was january 23 so effectively seven months after i filed for the n400 um so about the i751 um application it was processed and i just got my uh, my 10-year green card it was um, approved during the time that i went for my u.s citizenship interview so they actually um required kenny to come with me on the interview date because of that because of the i-751 but uh, when we got there, they said that they don't they didn't need him <laughs> effectively um, She said that it will be automatically approved so Which kind of makes sense because I won't be eligible to apply for the US citizenship if I'm not you know legally um, a, a legal permanent resident so 
that should be done prior to that or like a prerequisite so for the next video i am going to share with y'all um how the interview was and what to expect maybe some tips regarding it so yeah i hope that um this video is helpful for you um if you are like wondering what's going on with your application uh, it will take time and it will happen so but if if you and you can always call them if you need to so just to get some update from them anyway i hope you guys are doing great and i'll see you on my next video